Coming up on today's video, we'll discuss the monopoly of Magic the Gathering, as well as the way that Wizards of the Coast arranges the game to guarantee themselves the desired outcome. Hi everyone and welcome back. MTG Moxman here and thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today. We are less than 700 subscribers away from hitting the 15,000 subscriber mark and I just again wanted to say a big thank you to everyone out there who's helping make this happen. You all know who you are. It's awesome. Thanks again everyone. So the idea that Wizards of the Coast is a sole monopoly is kind of an interesting concept for people to understand because although there are other games out there like Fab, like MetaZoo, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, none of them have actually ever hit that level that Magic the Gathering still controls in the marketplace. If you looked up the definition of what a monopoly is, it would say something like the exclusive possession or control of the supply or trade in a commodity or a service. Hasbro was very good at controlling those things. They owned Monopoly, the actual board game, and they protected the rights of that IP to the very end until finally the patents ran out and it could be used by other people. But they will jealously guard anything like that that they control with that high of a value attached to it. And that's what they will continue to do with Magic the Gathering. It's not as if they're going to allow other companies to start breaking down parts of the patents and use it for their own uses or create Magic the Gathering supplemental cards through a different company. It's not going to happen, which means Magic the Gathering, Wizards of the Coast, Hasbro, has a, just a stranglehold on the game that we love to play. But it's actually worse than that. It's actually much worse than that. And because this game is a monopoly, they control the price point for entry for new players. They control the supply of how much goes out. And they set up the pricing structure itself for the game for anyone playing it. And here's where it gets a little bit scarier. The game is also rigged against the players. Imagine that. It's a rigged game. Not only are we playing a weird version of Monopoly but we're also playing in a game that we can't win unless they let us win. It is rigged. If you look up the definition of rigged, and I have it right here, a dishonest way to guarantee a desired outcome or a result. So think about that. A desired outcome or a desired result. If Magic the Gathering wants to change things around, they can Here's an example for you. In Modern Horizons, they gave us Mox Tantalite, and no one liked it. Everyone's like, it has Suspend on it. There's no real way of getting rid of Suspend counters per se. So this card just sits there on the sidelines between 7 and 10 bucks, and nobody cares about it. But it's a rigged game because they create the cards. If they want that card to go up in value, they'll create a single casting cost creature that removes all Suspend counters when it comes into play. So that way you can get your Mox Tantalite out on turn one and it shoots up to be a $70 card. And now that it's a $70 card, they can put it into a reprint, a reprint strategy into a new set coming up like Modern Horizons 4. They control the game. They set the parameters for the rules we play under. And that's where things can get scary. For those who've been around my channel for a while, I made a lot of money on Mox Amber. I bought them when they were 5 bucks, and I sold them when they hit that level of $70 Canadian. Now, most people would say, how would you ever know it was going to be worth money? Because of the wording they put in the card. It doesn't have to be good now. They made it good later. And I kind of knew that was going to happen. And when you look for those things, yes, you can kind of guess what they're going to do, but it could be years apart for when they need to have one of these desired results happen. If they want a set to be good, they can make it good if they choose to. When they want to play down a set, they can play it down and not make any of the cards that great. They can give us an amazing mana supply that will connect with other cards. When Wizards of the Coast needs to pivot to a more desirable outcome in the game, they will look at cards that they have planted in previous sets that they can draw upon to make the players happy. An example of that might be Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth, all your lands tap for swamps. Then they gave us, in Modern Horizons 2, 
Yavamaya Cradle of Growth. All your lands can tap for green. To make some players happy, you make a blue one, the white one, the red one. You complete the land cycle over a number of years. It guarantees a certain base level of appreciation for a set. And Wizards tries to really space that stuff out. Because they know they're planting things for long term, but they also plant them for when things are going badly. And they need to pivot to that result to change the player mentality toward the thought process on a product. This product's not that great, but it has this new land that connects with that land cycle. It has this new card that gets rid of suspend counters. There are ways they can change your thinking. And the longer they take between reprints, the higher the natural attrition rate of supply and demand becomes, and those cards can go up in value. They hold all the cards. But we as players are giving them a taste of their own medicine, something they've never had to face before. We play by their rules, we play by their game, and right now they're so worried because they're afraid we don't want to play their game anymore. They're afraid we're we're not buying product. We're not buying sealed. We're, We're not buying the stuff they want us to buy. Why? When you look at that M30 booster pack, and you look back on the history of how this game went down, this may go down as the 30th anniversary blip. A moment in time when all the players, content creators, got together and said no. No, 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 no. And we slapped them. And we put our wallets away. And we said not today because we're price sensitive people. And that made the people in the ivory tower get a kind of chill down their back saying what just happened? And that's where we're at right now. They are actually starting to become afraid that we don't want to play by the rules that they've set up. And they need this to be a success. So expect the pivot, the change. right? And when you look at a pivot, the kind of term for that is when the business model at hand needs to fundamentally change to a new direction because the old way is not working. They may not tell us they're pivoting. You may not notice it right away but you can bet that the pivot is coming they will change things up you will see some cards you always hoped were coming will probably start appearing in the next 14 months because although they control the monopoly of the game and although it's a rigged game it's only rigged and it's only a monopoly if we choose it to be that way because we can walk away and not play anymore and many players have left the game Many players are so upset they liquidated collections and they walked away. And now we're only, what, a couple of days away from this M30. I looked at the website. Oh, it's coming soon. And I sat there and said, I wonder who's going to buy it. I wonder how many people are going to step in front of a YouTube camera and do openings. Who are going to be the brave ones? With the brass, you know what's big enough to do it. Because you know that backlash that those uh, other content creators got. We know it's coming. And yes, they may have just made a mistake, but anyone who's purposely buying those packs that weren't sent to them free and they're paying the money and then opening it, that is something entirely different. And if you thought the first guys got negative uh, negative vibe feedback, you wait till those people put it up. It's going to be a horror show. And we all get to sit there with front row tickets, popcorn in hand. Of course, I'll have my nachos and cheese. And we will watch and we will relate and we will talk about it. And it will go through. And then, hopefully it flops and Wizards learns their lessons, does a pivot to something more positive, and changes the way the game is a little bit. Gives us a little more grounded way of thinking. Because this pie in the sky, spend all your money on this, because we tell you to, is really not going to fly with most people nowadays. It's done. It's over. Turning a chapter to a whole new book. Guys, thank you for hanging out with me today. Thanks for being here on the channel. Like I said, you can't change Monopoly, can't change the rigged game really, but we can change the direction of a company like this with our wallets. They want our money, they better chase it. Not us chasing them. They've got to chase us. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Thanks for being here today, MTG Moxman, and I look forward to seeing you guys all tomorrow. And hey, if you're new to the channel and you made it this far in the video, you're here. I hope you hit the subscribe button, and I hope you went ahead and put a boomstick in the comment section so I know you're here till the end. Have a great day, everyone. I'll see you all tomorrow. 
Hey guys, a big shout out to all the fantastic patrons out there supporting this channel each and every month, guys. I can't wait to get into December so we can have a good time. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Welcome back, everyone, to the end of the video. MTG Moxman here, of course, and yes, gave myself a haircut. You probably noticed I was so overdue, but my razor kit's up here. I just forgot to bring it with me. Gave myself the cut, gave the beard a really good trim. Feeling pretty slick. You know that feeling you get, you're like, ah, I feel, I feel fresh now. I'm working here at Dunder Mifflin Paper Company, another monopoly in the paper industry in the Southern Belt there. You know what it's like. Guys, this is crazy stuff. I'm loving it. Can't wait to see what happens. Thanks for being here at the end of the video. And of course, like I said, the boomstick. You got to put the boomstick in the comment section. But if you made it to this very end of the video, the end end, you put mini boomstick. See, there's two differences there. We'll see. We'll see how people do. Mini boomstick. All right. Have a great one, man. I'll see you guys soon.